past week, we've been exploring Italy. We started with a couple of days in Rome, and then we rented a car and toured the Tuscany countryside. In this episode, we explore the Cinque Terre, a national park along the rugged Italian Riviera coastline. The park consists of five small picturesque villages that are for the most part not accessible by car, and it's recommended to explore the villages by train. We start our journey from a parking lot in La Spezia. We're now in La Spezia. We booked a car park parking spot for 30 euros, 15 euros a night, just so it's like safely tucked away. La Spezia, the pretty. Somehow we're gonna get down there. <laughs> hey buddy, I'm pretty sure it's that one right there. We gotta get, gotta get on it. Made it. This is a lot of stairs. We found it, but it's not what we were expecting. Bedroom, bathroom, but views. The ocean is right there. We gotta go find some something to eat because we haven't really eaten all day. We had sandwiches this morning. That's kind of been it. Just gonna be drinking this wine and eating these these cereal biscuits. Hey, let's be sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, you gotta be. <laughs> you'll be standing right here. No different work. That's weird. How do you lock it from the inside or the outside? Oh, double doors. Yeah, but. <laughs> oh. What did you get? Some gnocchi, some pesto gnocchi. So green. Pesto. Look at this pizza, man. This is the Steven pizza. <laughs> so shattered. It's huge. Thank God you got a pizza. We are going to be exploring the Cinque Terre, which is a, along the Italian Riviera coastline, and it's made up of five different historical uh, seaside villages that people still live in and fish in today, and it's quite a tourist attraction as well. So we are staying in Bernaza, and we are going to be exploring the five towns that you can get to via train, or there is a famous hike that connects all of them. However, a lot of the paths are uh, experience some mudslides in that so they're not all accessible right now but that's something for the bucket list for us to come back and yeah. maybe do someday is to hike to all of them you can access some of the hiking trails right now um, but not all of them so we're gonna be starting off in uh, taking the train today to the first of the little towns and then kind of working our way down you're looking extra short today right? don't you think no like you're so low down this is where I normally <laughs> stand <laughs> our place dummy? does not have Handles on the outside. So there's just nowhere to close this. We're quite lucky actually in looking around for an affordable place to stay. Renata ended up being the spot that I chose, and it's considered to be one of the most beautiful in all of the Cinque Terre towns. So that's pretty special. And it is, it's lovely, it's an absolute maze. So we follow the signs that said Monarosa. So we're getting onto the trail here, and these are all of the trails of the Cinque Terre. Um, there's a map and you can find information online. It looks like you can buy like a hiking card because I believe you do have to pay to trek between the sit towns. Um, it says that it's closed from the 21st of October due to several landslides. So we're hoping that you can still access it just for a quick photo. But what's interesting and good to note is that I thought it was just flip flops that were forbidden, but apparently it's all open toed shoes. So I do have open toed shoes on today, but just going up to take a photo. Oh dear. That's sad. That's sad, we still get to be here. Oh. I can see Canada from here. <laughs> what? <laughs> 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 we decided to purchase train tickets at each stop we made to save a little money, but we wish we got the day pass. It's a little more, but means you don't have to wait in lines to use the machines in the busier seasons. It was so quick. It was like two minutes. Cool. Okay, let's go explore. This is Monterosa. It's the only 
uh, Cinque Terre uh, town with like a big sandy beach. So a lot of people come here in the summertime and it's filled with umbrellas and it's absolutely beautiful looking. It's unfortunate we're here on an overcast day because <laughs> it's really not making it seem like a sunny destination, but it is, it is. It's an interesting sense we have. I want to go swimming! Oh. Sea glass. This is definitely maybe not like the best tourist you spot in the off-season if you love beaches, but if you love beach combing, it is. I got like a blue clay, I got other clay pieces, which are super nice. And I found an orange sea glass, beach glass. I've never found orange before. Like obviously like beer bottle tinted brownish orange back home, but I found an orange bottle. I like that blue, it's so cool. The blue is like a clay, I think, because like, look, there's numerous ones. Some of them are like really, and then some are like a little bit fresher. That's a nice view. I have a D-layer for this one. So this one, the train station, is at the bottom of the hill and the town is at the top, so we got a ton of stairs to get up there. Yeah, we're going all the way up there, you see that? I see people on the stairs now. Nice find. Wow. That little town is where we're heading to next. Manarola. Is he there? Oh, so sad. Maybe next time. So far, out of all the little towns, I think this one's been my favorite so far. Really? Yeah. Unpopular opinion, I love that. Hard to get to. It is hard to get to, yeah, definitely limits the people, deters them. I feel like, so it's the only one that uh, can't be accessed by boat. So are they oranges or limes? Uh, these look like oranges. Yeah. Also, there's a bunch of walnut. <laughs> Just picked this uh, little quiet spot here. There's another beautiful spot down with a great view, but there's a lot of people and there were no prices with the menu. Whereas we were walking by this one, no people. Well, there was just one other couple who left. Still a great view and the menu has prices that look super affordable. So grab another drink before, while we wait for our next train. That's where we just were. Instead of going with beer, we got IGA, which is Italian grape ale, and it's a mix between beer and wine, and all the different breweries or regions make their own twist on this using the local grapes. So this one has three different local grapes, and it's really, really refreshing. Italian grape ale. Delicious. On to Manarola. This is a crazy tunnel. This is a crazy tunnel. Also, it's so crazy that, like, connect all the towns, there's this train and it just like goes right through the mountain. You want a tunnel. <laughs> Forget about the town. Come to Tinkatera. Come to Tinkatera for the experience. <laughs> Stay for the tunnel. Strange. It's like a Harry Potter kind of thing. That's your ice cream. It's gelato. Stop. <laughs> Manarola is very rugged, very busy. There's like four ice cream places right when you get off the train. And uh, it's just really pretty. Is this your favorite? You like this one? Pretty I do. Looking. I really like it. I really love the first spot for the beach access. Because I feel like it's so tempting to be so close to the water but not to be able to get to it in these other ones. Um, I literally like where we're at. Honestly, my favorite so far is the Vernaza. I would not even experience it. I don't know, it just felt more authentic and less busy. 
This will probably be my second favorite, I guess. Why did the lime get fired from the juice factory? He was being too sour? He couldn't concentrate. Oh. Ah, perfecto. <laughs> this is nice. From the waterfront, if you go up to the right, there's a little path, and uh, there's this really cool secret spot that nobody's at right now. So we have our beers and Pringles, and we're gonna just sit and enjoy the view. We're such hooligans, can you do mine too? <laughs> that hurt my bombs, I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> Hey, take this. Nope. <laughs> take it. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't you throw that <laughs> We're now in Rio Maggiore. Just got off the train and we got randomly stopped by the police. They wanted to look at our IDs. And, and like uh, check our identity on a website or something? He just like put it into a website and He then... said it was a standard check, but it was really weird. He wanted so our weird. passports. He was like, do you have your passports? And I'm like, first he started like, not, they weren't yelling. They were very much like, they walked up to us very forcefully yeah. in all Italian. And we were like, we, like we don't know. And they were like, passports. And we were like, no. <laughs> When you get into the main marina, go up to the left because you got this crazy, crazy view of the town. And if you go to the right, there's these rocks that you can climb on and go down to the water. And there's some crazy tourists here going on the black rocks. Very dangerous. I like watching the old man catch fish though. We're getting a sunset tonight. This is incredible. So exciting. I think food is in the way and I don't want to go I'm as hungry as I am. Everyone's like, Dinner, sunset, perfect. I think here. So you got mixed vegetable and fish. And fish, and I got calamari. It's got a whole squid. Yep. For some reason, I thought there was fries for the. No, it was just an entire thing of fish, and that's why you were like, I want the entire thing of squid or octopus or whatever. And I'm like, oh, we'll move, we'll move. Oh, well, it's good. Great spot to end the uh, day. I think we accomplished a lot. I wish we had a little bit more time here. A little more, a little bit more time in every town. Yeah. But we were like rushing to do, like I think we spent like an hour at each place, right? Apart from Cornigula, we did two hours. Once that sun sets, get the whole town to yourselves. I mean, if you're gonna, if Tinkatera is like a highlight of your trip, and you're spending money to come here maybe plan to not eat out every day and try to put that money into actually staying in one of the towns is what i would recommend would you say i guess so but also Aspasia. hit up a grocery store well yeah Bring early because there's no big stores here <laughs> oh yeah that's true too it's like pack light but also like no nah, don't pack, pack some pack food <laughs> <laughs> but can you imagine like the average show going up those stairs that we did yeah when you have the entire town to yourself basically <laughs> As I said that, there was like a solo person that popped up. This is incredible. I wish we could spend the morning here and not leave right away. Back to the car, we left for NASA. It was brilliant, loved the whole experience. Yes, I wish, yeah. Wish we had more time, wish, wish there was more, more daylight. Yeah. Weren't 
too pleased with the place we stayed at. We like, you, we like the view and the balcony. But. I feel like you could definitely do all of the Cinque Terre in a day, um, but it would be better if you did it in a day during like more daylight hours. If not, maybe definitely try to do two days because yeah. I wish we had two full days so that we could do all the towns and then choose our favorite and just go back and chill out, out yeah. like, and or like enjoy our accommodation more. Highly recommend staying within the Chicken Terra region. Like, if you can find something that's affordable, I feel like it's probably price wise is way more in the high season. So like, we just we lucked up in finding an affordable place. It wasn't an amazing place, but. Few hours later, we're in Verona. We're gonna go explore. We just arrived at the Castle San Pietro. It's got some good views here, and then we're just gonna walk into town. Luckily, we found like a parking spot. Parking spaces, they have limited parking spaces right at the castle. You can't actually go into the castle, but it is behind us here. But it's known as one of the greatest viewpoints of over the city. Um, this is a pretty historical city, as everywhere in Italy is, and this is actually like where Romeo and Juliet is based. This is an amazing view. Some things we're learning about Verona really quickly is uh, everybody dresses really, really nice. Bring a nice coat. Yeah, like we are severely underdressed. <laughs> we look like we're like. Homeless. Definitely don't belong here. Yeah. This is the Verona Arena, and it was built in the first century, 30 AD. It's actually the third largest amphitheater arena um, after the Colosseum in Rome would be the biggest. Uh, Capua, I believe it's called, would be the second. I'm not positive where that one is. And then there's this one, and it's still in use today. They use it. You can visit it all year long, except right now because from November 6 to December 6, it's under construction. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can visit it all year long, except for when there's concerts, because they actually have like big concerts and events in there too so you can like see some famous artists and events and go inside as well there's a cute puppy behind you is there a cute puppy so this is the piazza bra 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's like bra <laughs> <laughs> bra This is Juliet's house, a very popular tourist attraction when coming to Verona, but it's complete tourist hoax. This is actually the home of Juliet because that's it was based on not real people. Um, but you can come here and see it. You can also touch Juliet's breasts over there, and it'll give you love luck, apparently. <laughs> We're gonna try one of these. Brazil con formaggio. So we got ourselves some mulled wine. That's really nice. Is it like got cinnamon in it or something? Yeah, it's but good. I like that it's not too sugary. Like there was sugar there that you could put in it. Did you notice that? Yeah. Because there was other people that were going around with stir sticks. So I think you can like add stuff to it, but we just got it as is the classic, and it's pretty good. the whole, everything was in it was in Italian. Nothing was in English there, and nobody spoke English, <laughs> which was co pretty cool. Like it seemed very like locally. Is it real? <laughs> Maybe. Let's get red eyes. Climbing back up these stairs. Stairs for days. That was a quick little stop in Verona. Really nice spot. Really nice. I think it's like a little a little Rome. A mini Rome. A mini Rome. Beautiful. It was really, really beautiful. We could have spent all day roaming the streets there and there's lots of different shops, both high end and actually no, I only saw high end shops. <laughs> <laughs> and then markets as well. There it's was really like cute markets. four different markets. We couldn't explore them all. We have to get going because we have to get this rental car back. And next stop is Venice. Venice. So. We're going to Venice Airport. Get rid of yes. this car first. <laughs> I screamed bingo once we got once right when we got here. And the <laughs> like the windows down. down and... Dave was like, bingo. <laughs> Good job, baby. Oh, we did it. I'm so proud. We of you. did it. So so proud. We drove across Italy. Only a part of it. Too. A huge chunk of it. Pretty big chunk. Oh my gosh. Sketchy tolls. Next time we're doing the boot. The boot. Boot. And the, and the ball. <laughs> <laughs> the ball. <laughs> 
Goodbye, little car. <laughs> Those airport sunsets. To Venice. Thanks for watching our adventures around the Cinque Terre. In the next episode of our Italy series, we explore Venice before heading home. You don't want to miss out, so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We super appreciate it.